Jackson is Gladys and <laughs> Nichols are the Pips. <laughs> the the Pips, yes. <laughs> Mr. Nichols is a Pip. Statement from Onfunk regarding Nichols telling on himself and and basically Nichols trying to get help for himself. Like he need brother needs to pay for a lawyer. We did it for him. We don't believe Hey, no, no, sir, Mr. Harvey, stop right now. Stop right now. Stop. All right, y'all, today we're going to have a video that's focused on Bruce Harvey, the legendary Georgia lawyer, Bruce Harvey. This week, he had a couple of really interesting moments, and you're going to see where he declares that his client is a pip and also where he goes off on the whole court. So we're going to we're going to let it. It's a slow burn today. We're not going to rush anything. So, you know, take your time. Let it cook. Let it develop. Sit back, relax and uh, let's get into it. Also, as always, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. Here we go. Uh, Ms. Harvey, you wanted to raise something about uh, item number 74 with Dennis. We were going to look at the uh, CAD reports also, so we can do both of those things before we get to the next grouping of witnesses. That's that's correct, Judge, and we were waiting to see the um, the court's order. The court's order dealt with um, essentially the admission of lyrics. Um, it, our challenge to it's number 26, Dennis, item number 74, right? Did the state find that order? Immediately. Okay. Your Honor, we sent that order last night to Floyd Hallmark. Judge Blaine was ruling on the lyrics. Okay. I didn't see it in my email this morning, but maybe it's there now. But what, would it be a fair characterization um, to say that it's the admission of the lyrics and the court ruled on the admission of the lyrics this is a video <clears throat> and it is a video essentially with one of our co-defendants as the primary singer um and i, I believe it has mr Nichols in the background. So my my challenge is not to the to the admission of the lyrics, okay, but to the admission of a, of the video. And I think the video should be admitted against, uh, with all due respect, Mr. Jackson, but not admitted against Mr. Nichols. It's Mr. Jackson's video. And Mr. Nichols is in the background. And that would be like saying, you know, um, if Gladys Knight and the Pips were singing, it would be admitting the actions of the Pips against Gladys Knight and that midnight train to Georgia. Not that I remember is that you song. here? Jackson is Gladys and <laughs> Nichols are the Pips. <laughs> The the pips, yes. <laughs> Mr. Nichols is a pip. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I guess Mr. N I don't know. Let me look at the video, but I would think that both Mr. Nichols and the pips are in the background voluntarily. Be before you look at the video, can I just make an observation and a comment? Um, my client's artistic expression, I, I want to put this in context. My client was arrested in 2005. The state has, not until 2022, I guess, got around to trying this case. Uh -huh. um, Mr. Mr. Stillwell uh, was rapping, and he dared to say in his rap song, I beat a murder rap, paid my lawyer 30 for that. Because a reasonable person would believe that he had been arrested for murder and beat it because he had been released and no one had tried him. I have no idea how this has become some sort of admission saying I beat a murder rap because 
he was arrested for murder, and he did beat it. I have no idea the relevance of this. He's just stating I've been arrested for murder, which is clearly true. And he beat it because he was out on bond. So I have no idea why this is admissible against anyone. I have no idea why it's relevant. I agree with Mr. Harvey that the fact that Mr. Nichols is in the background shouldn't come in either, but I don't believe that this should come in against my client. I think that this whole ruling is out of left field, respectfully, and that's our stance on it. I just wanted to provide that context before you view the video, because that's what it is. It's years after he had been arrested for murder. When's the video from? I don't... 2019, we believe. 2019. So it's four years. The state says 2019. I'm not certain, but according to the state, it's four years after he had been arrested, he had been released, and no one had tried him on the murder, which he's innocent of, and he was merely stating, I beat a murder rap. So I don't know why any of this is coming in, but I appreciate Mr. Harvey's point that nothing came out of his client's mouth either. Yeah, it's not an assertion under 801 D2E. So I don't see it coming in with regard to Mr. Nichols, and I adopt everything that Mr. Shart just said as well. It's not against any interest either, Your Honor. It's not against any interest. It's not anything that's inculpatory. Talk into the mic, because they can't hear you back there. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. I'm not sure that it's against any interest. It's not anything that's inculpatory. I think that might just be a statement by a party opponent. All right, but my client made no assertion. No, no, I'm talking about as to Mr. Jackson himself. Your Honor, I would point the court's attention as well in response to Mr. Nichols' assertion to page 8 and 9 of the order. Okay, I still don't have the order in front of me, so send it to the court. Your Honor, I would just say this. It was set at 447. Okay. Go ahead. I don't run. All right, I don't see any reason to revisit the ruling. Well, it wasn't. With regard to the, so if we don't show the video, then it, I mean, the state intends for it to come in as against everybody, and there's no way for it to do that if the jury doesn't see everybody in the background. Well, if it comes in, I don't think it should come in against Mr. Nichols. It should come in against Mr. Stilwell, and I would again ask for a 105 instruction with regard to this. It is, it is, again, he, Mr. Nichols is just a person in the background. Who chose to be in the background. So y'all can argue the same thing you've argued to me, which is, okay, all this is is a song. But the state can argue what it wants to argue. The ruling, I don't see, again, any reason to revisit that. And with regard to the video itself, it would be the same rulings. This is on April 1st of 2022, and the state, this is Defendant Stilwell on a contraband phone talking to Danique Young Garlington about a number of things. He discusses, so there's a lot of discussion about the Shamel Drinks murder where, and we will, we're going to ask to play this entire call, but Defendant Stilwell says he doesn't know why Miles got out of the car, referencing to Miles Farley. And 
Miles Farley was arrested April 1st as well, which is the same day that this call was made. He also discusses We had referenced this some earlier, but they're kind of like how it, they're trying to de decipher how Farley is handling getting arrested on this you know, serious charge of murder. But there's a lot discussed, but we would like to play it. But it mentions uh, a number of different relevant circumstances to include um, defendant Sewell tells Garland that it's ugly and he needs him. He also states and they discuss Garlington tells defendant Stillwell that uh, Dolly said thugs not talking to anybody and Garlington says it should be funny. He should be funny and post free wife and Lucci because at the same time, Mr. Bennett is also in the Fulton County Jail. And so also defendant Stillwell tells Garlington that the gunpowder test will come back clean so he isn't tripping, uh, which the state believes is in reference to the vehicles utilized in the murder of Chamel Drinks. So the state's going to play this call from the beginning to the end. Hello. Hey, what's up, bro? What's up? Baby. Say what? Baby. What's up, man? What's up, man? Man, shit right here listen to the new, the new yeah. weapon. Huh? I said right here listen to the new young boy. What you got going? Can I? Yeah, 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 you know, I can hit you on that other phone and shit, bro. I'm for, 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 on that motherfucker. For real? Are you on? Oh, this is another one? No, it's, it's, uh, same yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, bro. I know, I've been, I, I just, I said, um, I ain't said about FaceTime, how to say. That's what you're right. I tell him I ain't said it. I, 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 I really, I really tell her spot, so I just, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't. I can't, man. They want for I don't for I don't for tripping on them want for real, man. Yeah, yeah. I said I said one shit. I said I said shit. I'm gonna go straight to my house. I had stay out of that Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, they do Yeah, they, damn, somebody said it. Um, uh, T-Rock was up there with you or something? Yeah, T-Rock, um, was downstairs with me. Yeah, because somebody at me in the hood, they're like, uh, bro, bro, down there with, yeah, with um, T-Rock. I don't know, I ain't no T-Rock locked up. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. What the hell going on? Everything, what the hell, what the hell, what's up with Trump, man? What the hell what he doing? Trump crazy like that. What do you think? Just Trump crazy, man. <laughs> Man, I don't know shit though. You sound crazy about Miles? Nah, it's about me talking about Miles and shit. Bro, I ain't on TV, I ain't heard of that. Yeah, they, he, it, it's a lot of the shit I told, boy. Yeah. Let yeah, me blow. They, they blow? Yeah, hey, me blow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, bro, I ain't talk to him, bro. I'm the only person that be talking to the ear, Miles. Yeah. Like, yeah, he be asking me, like, what's going on? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, what the hell? Like, 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 uh, like, them other, damn, bro. Like, them other. Everything, yeah, everything yeah. smooth, though. Yeah, I know it. I already know that. They just, they just got them, they on, they on mild, though. Yeah. Because he, he just got that shit going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm like, shit, what the hell they locked up for? Like, they can't say anything about the drama. I'm like, bro, they good. I'm just like, they gonna assume some shit like that anyway. Yeah, yeah. They, they gonna assume that, like, I don't, like, y'all ain't did, and I ain't killed them, so. That's why like, I keep telling you, um, um, Lou, I'm gonna keep telling him, like, just chill, like, I know. Yeah, like, yeah, cause they can't handle it. Yeah, I'm like, this ain't nothing, bro. Like, they just doing that cut. They seem as they got that gas. It's like, they chill. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell yeah, man. That's what I'm telling. I, I keep telling them out the time. I'm like, listen, bro. They're like, you're like, bro, I'm feeling probably in cat. Listen, bro, no. They're telling for you on the talk, bro. Like, man, listen, bro. I told, I had not told Big. I told Baba, I'm like, hey, tell your buddy. Do the same thing I did. When I went in there, I told him for, hey, I want to see my lawyer. Yeah, my yeah, lawyer. Don't, I'm going to say nothing there to me. So he got to do the same shit. Don't say what, not one word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Drew down or what they yeah. try to portray or what they say, man. Don't say shit. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I ain't know that no way. Like, like, so I hadn't. Hey, man, I don't even have. Hey, man, I don't even have. But I say something to like, hey, bro. But, like, here if I just come and they're like, you heard? And I'm like, yeah, nah. I'm like, shit, I know. I'm like, I'm like, I keep in contact too. You know what I'm saying? They, they, I ain't turn on the phone. I'm like, he don't understand that anyway, though. Yeah, I ain't doing that anyway. Yeah, I don't know. You, I don't know. I ain't doing that. 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 Jay got that oh, no, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit, she ain't saving it, but you know I got it. Yeah. I know, like, when I talked to one call today, and she, like, she told me, y'all, they're like, be patient. Because she hasn't had that talk to you. She's DMing. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. yeah. She, like, man, they tell them, like, man, no, I ain't, no, you're probably going to leave them folk like that. And I'm like, they tell them to be patient. They were the day, they were the morning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, man, that's him, do patient, bro. Bro, I got it. Well, I already know that part. I just, like, I know, like, how that go. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I ain't really tripping on that. I ain't tripping. Like, yeah. I've been just trying to keep buddy calm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, do that, bro. Yeah, bro. I don't really be liking that coach and shit. That shit be having me all right. out, like. Yeah, I talk to the phone. I talk to the phone, like. I talk to the phone. All right. Like, I've I been on bro, like, he had in the FaceTime, like, yo, what's up, Quay, like, what right the hell, I don't know, Quay, on the phone, saying something, like, I don't know if he on shit, like, he told real, like, man, tell buddy got down get his lawyer, bro, we did that shit for him, he paid, he, you know what I'm saying? What? Yeah, that was, that was, um, phone call me, he like, bro, tell him, chill out, man. Nah, I ain't know that about it. Yeah, then we got down the stairs. He was like, he was like, yeah, they was on the cell phone. But I ain't even say nothing. So I'm like, I know I ain't even go there. I'm like, I ain't got access to no phone. Hell nah, he ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't nothing like that. Nah, I, don't, I don't think he said no shit like that, though. Yeah. But then, I thought, what, that was telling us, I'm like, what the hell is he saying? Born for me. Who? She told him dates, I'm like, born for me. I kept. Yeah. She really kind of tell me to be careful. I was a corner. And they went in the. I you know I ran to the boy little place by myself. Yeah? Yeah. I ran to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ran to him by myself. Like, that's on TV. Showing up on the seat and turn the head. Yeah. But like, yeah. But like, we don't laugh. And cold them. No better be on my, on my page and shit. So, I don't know who told shot a video chat. Like, Bro, when I ain't, I ain't run, I say, nigga, I say, you ain't run, you damn sure turn your head, bad, though. Huh? I say, I say, yeah, I say, nah, I ain't say you ran, you damn sure touch your head when you see me, though. Yeah. I ain't know, I ain't know what's wrong. I'm like, listen, bro. I'm like, listen, bro. You know what's going on. Like, before all this shit, like, shadow restraint. Yeah. I'm like, shit, bro, you know what's going on. I'm like, you know what's going on. Like, I'm 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 like, how this shit go like I'm like yo I used to speak to you and everything I'm like shit that ain't going on no more bro I'm like y'all yeah. I'm like yeah that's on TV I'm like man I had a corn right now I told corn to be quiet yeah yeah yeah, yeah well, now now they just made a video about an hour ago on clear at the store with, with little sticks and shit like yeah all in my hood I'm like three hours good thing man they don't awesome. they 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 man Oh, I be saying stay away from it. Eh, 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 eh. That's police shit. Yeah, man. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's true shit. I ain't with that. Yeah, yeah. Damn, man. It's all good. Everything, everything. I know it. So you still like, like, you still like got nobody right now? Uh, like, they, they want to take no payment? They ain't, they ain't really saying he, but I ain't really saying that he's just really like just chill be patient like same thing um, white tell you yeah okay 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 so I ain't been around like 
Y'all just say, do you it. Ain't talking to nobody. Like, they say, they like, bro, I ain't never seen that nigga hurt like that. Well, that nigga hurt behind that shit. Yeah. I thought they said the one he really, really fucked with. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, yeah, man. Everyone talk your ass too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? Uh, nigga, what? What? Yeah. I heard. Yeah. No, I could be funny with free um free wife and Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Don't tell me that shit. I'm like, man, I'm gonna help swear over here. Man, what? You want something? Don't know they call him. Don't be slam on him. They say he working the police in the game. Like they say, like he got police. Like he probably don't know, but like they don't know. Like they watch his ass. Yeah. Yeah. Like they find his ass. Mhm. Yeah. And they say they were gonna do it. We got um so we pull them, pull them, pull them, pull them over or some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that I don't think I don't think I don't chill or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he on. Yeah, I'll tell him. I'll tell him about like this. You like, man. If I ain't got to him, I already know. Like, I don't be got to chill. Yeah. Like, on the other one, like people like, man, you know, I stand on more. I fought with you. I fought with you, but mm-hmm. home on the other. I think about like, about about that on some female shit. Man, I don't know. Wait, I don't know, man. Yeah, I ain't on DB. I ain't heard nothing about that, though. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't even talk. Only time we talk to him, I talk to him like the same night. Like, yeah, I got locked up. You gotta, you gotta add, you, when you call, when you call, boy, you gotta add, boy, when you say, cuz. I can't really say, like, cuz she won't really just tell you what she say. Yeah, I can't really say, like, Cause she won't really just tell me like in detail, but she just, you know, she just being around the book. I really be telling her, man, shit, fuck up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that one night, cause I ain't going for that strength. Yeah, that, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you know I got you, bro. I had to go long. I'm trying to get down. I just had to take care of got down. I know I got you, bro. You ain't got to get yeah. down the whole time, bro. I know I know how that yeah. shit is. Like, I, I'm knowing, like, 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 you need this shit, like. Yeah. They got you, bro. I'm here with you, man. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm trying to get. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, you know, like, I ain't gonna, I still word, but, like, cause, like, I don't even have to say your name. Like, she know who I be talking about, cause I don't be talking about nobody else, but I ain't gonna hit you on that motherfucker, like, ever. You see what yeah. I'm saying? But, you know, everything really good, though. Know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm like, yeah, I heard that shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, bro, that shit was fast as hell. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. Just assume, assume. Yeah, I don't know. Like, when they got down, go to wife and I'm doing them, got down, them, them, uh, you know, they can't powder for rings, all that shit, though. Um, yeah. You don't come back clean. You see know what I'm saying? So I ain't tripping on that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, man. What the hell, uh, what the hell, swimming on? Mr. Steven, yo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what is that? I'm so, you know what's what? Yeah, I see. Who? Who? Yo, folk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was at one yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, he got me yeah, um, out of town, man. Yeah. He's gonna, um, he's gonna get ready to come back. I was just gonna lie with him. Yeah. You ain't talking all night. That was a night crazy, bro. Yeah, I said, talk to Jose. I talked to Jose. Well, that'd be crazy. I, I, I'm telling him, like, I'm like, he on the same phone. Like, he probably be over there, like, what not? She's like, what? So you think you're gonna uh-huh. tell on me? <laughs> like, uh-huh. hell, nah. <laughs> uh, she can't. I don't even be testing my ass back no more. I should be testing on, like, on the table shit? Yeah, I don't even be trying to ask her crazy. Yeah. 
I look, I'm finna get, I'm finna get bro back his phone, right? I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna get up with you though. I do that, man. I got right, you. Right. I know you too. Your Honor, the, the call is complete. Um, so I don't know if defense has any objections to this call. I think the court understands the state's position of this. We've labeled it as a co-conspirator statement in furtherance. Your Honor, Carter Jim Matthews again on behalf of Mr. Mark Wavius Huey. So there was a reference in this call again to a quay. And uh, our position, <clears throat> as we stated earlier, is that it's a 403 issue that we're making at this time as we did previously. We believe that this is a confusion, uh, creates a confusion of the issues with this, the use of the name Quay constantly. The jury has heard the name Quay in this trial up to this point, they have heard it. Um, we did file a motion for severance uh, at a previous date, it was denied. Uh, I'd like to renew our request for a severance on this issue for the record. And uh, on the basis, again, it's a 403 issue with respect to this word name Quay being repeatedly used. I think I've heard it like three times, at least in these series of calls. So on that basis, Your Honor, we believe that a 403, and if the court is unwilling to grant the severance uh, under the 403 confusion of issues, confusion of evidence, uh, I would ask this court to, again, reserve the issue to allow us to craft an appropriate 105 instruction that will address this issue. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, is there any response right yes. now from the state? Your Honor, Detective Viverito will clear up, I think quite clearly that this is in reference to Defendant Nichols, not Defendant Huey, because when they're referencing, they're upset that on a phone call, Mr. Nichols says we did this for Big Bro, talking about the state's uh, theory Defendant Williams, in terms of what we did it, the murder of Shamel Drinks, who was, um, I've already described kind of the, the back and forth, but the testimony and the state's theory, so there won't be any argument at closing, and Detective Viverito, who is going to be introducing these wiretap calls, she will make crystal clear who that Quay is referenced on the call. All so right. there won't be any confusion. Okay, well, that'll, that'll cure any potential confusion. Just want to make sure that she does that. All right. Am I correct to, in my belief that the state intends to introduce this whole call? Sounds like it. Okay. So my immediate concern is around five minutes and 30 seconds. Mr. Garlington, Mr. Garlington is talking at this point, not my client. I talked to Funk. I talked to Funk. I've been with Bra. Uh, and he had me on FaceTime, like, yo, what's up with Quay? And then Quay on the phone saying something like, I don't know if he on this SHIT, like, he told Rel, like, tell Buddy, God dang, get a lawyer, bruh. We did that ish, that SHIT for him. He paid, you know? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we got Garlington having talked to Unfunk, who is Mr. Greer, who supposedly, and, and I'm trying to put it together, it's, it's not completely clear, but he talks to someone named Rel, and then somehow this comes back to Quay, who, um, you know, Mr. I, th I think that the state is asserting is Mr. Nichols. So we have like a game of telephone with four different steps leading to Garlington, then saying this to my client. Um, and then it should be noted, my client does not um, tacitly acknowledge, or I think we've been using tacit admission, um, he says that doesn't sound right. So it's not that. He pushes back, and it's just nested hearsay times four in what Mr. Garlington's saying. So 
I have a real problem with that because obviously that is um, that is someone who is not testifying to my knowledge, the originator of this, and it's passed around a few times, and it goes directly to my client's innocent or innocence or guilt. And it's you know this this little bit in itself strongly suggests that my client is guilty because. The implication is Quay said we did this for Buddy. I'm not concerned about the for Buddy part. I'm more concerned about the we did this part. Um, so that's a major flag right there. And um, it's nested here, say, it's 403, any probative value that could come from this um, other than its value as hearsay with four steps is negligible. Um, Clearly, they could get out the facts that they're talking about attorneys without going into that that segment right there that is extremely prejudicial to my client. So that's that's my first objection. Um, I would also object that these other conversations about attorneys just generally are are not furthering any conspiracy, but. Um, but those, those don't. Uh, there's an extra level of concern regarding the the time around five thirty. All right. Well, I think we've discussed the um, issue of attorneys potentially being provided by leaders already, and my ruling would be the same with regard to that. What is the state's response to the um, issue of it being hearsay inside of hearsay, um, the we did this part? So, Your Honor, that this, that this is a classic co-conspirator statement. This is one co-conspirator um, providing reassurance to, providing direction to, um, and promoting cohesiveness with another co-conspirator in furtherance of the conspiracy itself, which is YSL, um, the criminal street gang. Bigger. Right, but back up into the, this isn't just him, this is somebody else saying that, right? And yeah. Mr. Um, Shard, at least, is saying that Mr. Stilwell pushes back on the assertion. And this was a lot, so I might have to hear it again. But yes, Your Honor, if that's accurate, then that seems like that couldn't be. Oh yeah, this is an adoptive admission. So, Your Honor, a couple of things. One, defendant Stillwell is quite upset that Mr. Nichols made that. So the fact that Garlington and defendant Stillwell are discussing that. They need to know what's said on jail calls. They need to know who's talking to the police. They need to know who may fold, and they need to keep tabs on both members in jail and outside. So when they reference earlier about Mr. Farley and how is he doing, and he needs to, so yeah, that's not the part that they're raising that Mr. Sharp's raising an issue about right now. You're specifically discussing your so defendant Nichols saying we killed him for bro. And she, Mr. Shard saying cannot come in in this conversation with his client and Mr. Garlington when they're discussing the intimate details of the murder that they did for bro. Uh, the state feels that, and this is why, and I will find the case on this, their conversation, Garlington and Shannon Stilwell, in all its contents, whether they knew this personally, they knew this from like, that statement, their conversation is fostering cohesion amongst them because they both agree he shouldn't be saying that on the phone. And that's where co-conspirator 801D2E is a little bit unique where this nested hearsay, if it's, if it's deemed a statement in furtherance of the conspiracy, keeping abreast of the crime, future, past and or future activities, fostering cohesion among street gang members, that type of analysis is incorrect. If you deem that statement and them discussing what one of the other co-defendants did in the murder that the state indicted both defendant Stilwell and Mr. Nichols with and Mr. Garlington with, I think it's quite, I think it is classic co-conspirator hearsay, which takes aside Mr. Shard's objection. 
the nested hearsay is not an appropriate analysis if you deem that statement, which the state believes it is, is co-conspirator statement. That's the state's position on this nested double here. We really need to see your yep. case law. Yes, Your Honor. I think and that's we... just an incorrect statement. I would be surprised that it just makes what would otherwise be a valid evidentiary objection disappear. Maybe it does. And so if it's hearsay, and I'd have to, like the court, I have to hear that little part again. But if they're saying that it's hearsay, that Mr. Nichols' statement about what they did is hearsay, and Mr. Stilwell is on the call. Right. Right? Yeah, this is Garlington and Stilwell. Right. And when he says that his client pushes back, he's not saying we didn't kill him. Let me, yeah, I don't know. Let's hear it again. There was a lot to unpack with this. Maybe it would have been better to take this in sections. He says that doesn't sound right. And to push back, you don't need to repeat everything that was said and said, no, that's wrong, no, that's wrong, no, that's wrong. Well, I mean, it could have been in reference to the whatever the arrangements were for an attorney. I don't know exactly where that came. But let's start with the proposition that it's Garlington and Shannon. Garlington is talking about talking to Funk, who had him on Funk, who had him on FaceTime. And that's what Mr. Nichols allegedly told Rel, which was repeated by Funk to Garlington. So, I mean, we're talking about layers upon layers. And this is the classic nested here. So you can't just say if one state with the first conversation comes in, everything else in the world comes in. It doesn't. Well, I don't think it does. But the state seems to think that there's law that says it does. So we're going to let them find that. And if you just want to point me to wherever the original motion is or response is, I can read it on my own. But, I mean, if that's easier than you trying to find it right now. Your Honor, I'm trying to find both, both the date and the motion itself. Can you play just maybe the last 30 seconds again? Yeah, 
Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, wait, 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 um, talking to Onfong, who is a was a co is a co defendant who pled guilty in this case, and they are um, alarmed at the fact that another member is potentially on a jail call saying that we did that for bruh, and that's the point at which Shannon is pushing back, saying like, "What? Right. Like, I can't believe that." And then he's like, nah, you know, he, 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 he couldn't, have, he didn't do that. And the other guy says, you know, I don't know. He could have been on a cell phone or what, but that's what I heard him say. So his alarm isn't at, he's lying on me. His alarm is that, and this is what we would argue. Of course, anyone can make their own arguments at trial, but we believe that this is what the evidence shows that the alarm is at the fact that this person on a jail phone is saying something highly incriminating to them and sharing this information between them all. It, and the alarm in itself is evidence of the fact that this whole conversation is in furtherance of that conspiracy, which is the enterprise that is YSL and the criminal street gang activity of YSL. So none of it is hearsay when all of it is statements of a co-conspirator. It is their reaction to their it's belief. It's still hearsay, even if it's a statement I'm of sorry, a co-conspirator. So, I mean, at some point, y'all are saying, this isn't hearsay because we're not offering it for the truth. So I know that's sorry, not what you was, meant, but I'm let's sorry. try to keep the terminology clear. Right. You're right. You're very, very right. And I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just want to make clear, like, you know, we, got, right. we have important. got to all be clear about what we are saying and what we mean by what we're saying. Your Honor is absolutely right. All right. Um, and so that is, we are saying that it is, there is an exception. Right. <laughs> and that this is the exception that it falls under. Okay. All right. And so, again, I understand that the conversation between Stilwell and Garlington might come in under a co-conspirator exception to hearsay. The thing that is that issue is the relaying of Nichols allegedly having said, you know, whatever he said, we, you, you need to line up a lawyer or whatever, you need to pay for it, because we did this for Buddy. Right. And the concern is that either that part is being offered for its truth, or even if it's not, that certainly once the jury hears that, they take that as evidence that it is true. Understood. So I'm I so here are, more clearly. Are, are, do I understand you to be arguing that that part of that is also co-conspirator exception or no? The, there, I need to address that part of it. So one moment, Your Honor. Sure. Do I have the argument correct that y'all are propounding? Well, y yes. Um, and if while they're gathering this, can I, Mr. Atkins is listening, I hope. So can I respond? If we break this down, here's what the sentences were. Garlington says, I talked to Funk. I've been with Bruh. I don't know who that is. And he, I don't know whether that, that refers to Funk or Bra. And he had me on FaceTime. That could refer to either one of those people. What's up with Quay? That's the next question, next statement. Why the hell? I don't know. Quay on the phone saying something like I don't know if he and again we got a he on shit I, I, 
I don't know who the he is referring to. He told Rel. That's another person. That's another layer. But that's somebody who's listening. That's not somebody who's talking. So anyway, I, and also, can I get this portion of what you've written down as a transcript? Because it would be most helpful. Uh, I, I, I can give you what we have, yes. Okay, but, great. but I'm breaking it down because now we're on a third person. He told, I don't know. Okay, but that's here. a listener, so keep going. Okay, he told Rel, and I don't know who Rel is, and I don't know whether Rel told Funk, and I don't know whether Rel told Bro. Right. I don't, we have no clue. <laughs> okay, but keep going. Okay, he told Rel, like, tell Buddy God dang, get a lawyer, bruh. We did that shit for him. He pay, you know. Um, and then Garlington says, "You know what I'm saying." Um, to to Garfield. Um, I mean, so to Shannon. I'm sorry. And Shannon says, "What?" And Garlington says, "Yeah, that's what Funk told me. Mm -hmm. He was like." Tell homie to chill out, bro. Now, who's homie? And who's the bra? I mean, we have so many layers of unknown. And nested hearsay is exactly that. That's the whole point. Okay. So the short answer is yes, I've got your argument. Okay. Correct. In terms of understanding what it is you're arguing. Yes. Okay. Your Honor, to be clear, for because I may not articulate this well, my my, my position with what uh, Mr. Harvey mm -hmm. just broke down, at least what what these statements they say. Yeah. Un Funk, who was a defendant in this case, and the state believes was a YSL street gang member, him telling Garlington that Nichols need Nichols needs to chill. Unfunk wasn't is in charge with the murder of Shamel Drink, so him telling him that is a statement in furtherance of the okay. conspiracy. Nichols needs to chill. That's not what I'm concerned about. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. But, but, I'm but, concerned about the Funk saying, Garlington saying Funk told him that Nichols said he needs to pay. We did this for him, so he needs to get us the lawyer. And your honor, the state feels but send and, it to Rel. Not it to doesn't Funk. matter who he said it to. It, it sounds like Funk heard it regardless. He, no. Do I have that part wrong? I think you do because okay. he said it to Rel. Rel <laughs> said it to somebody else. Nichols said it to Rel. Well, allegedly. allegedly. Allegedly, I understand. Yes, yes. And then Rel to Funk, um, then Funk to Garlington. So that's four layers at least. So, Your Honor, the two things is, and, and the court may just disagree with my argument, which in terms of. What I'd like I like is some law. Yes, Your Honor. So the case law I was referencing earlier. I will find this date, but it is there's no double hearsay issue. The statements are admissible without a showing of the declarant's personal knowledge. And I may have been off kilter where I was thinking that this is what I was thinking of when I referenced to the court that there's not double hearsay in this statement. Is that under and I will just cite to this motion because the court can read this and I okay. but I will find the date. But my the state's position is that. It is co-conspirator. It is in furtherance. Like the fact that Garlington is concerned or receives this information that Nichols made that statement. I, I understand that part. I That's agree right. with that part. So the Colonel, that part in the middle. That you understand <laughs> what my concern is. I do is love. You seem to understand it before. And I'm sure Mr. Atkins understands it too. He's just too busy looking up the, Trying to find the law. That, but, yeah, that, go ahead. That colonel in the middle that Own Funk said, Nichols tells somebody, we did this for bro. Nichols saying, we did this for bro. 
Nichols saying we did this for bro, I'll start out by saying at best or worst, whichever you want to look at it, Nichols is implicating himself and not Shannon necessarily. He hadn't said Shannon did anything. He's saying we, me and somebody else did this for bro. So that's to start there as to Mr. Sharp's argument that it necessarily implicates Shannon who has to push back. Number two, Onfum being a co-defendant of Mr. Nichols mm -hmm. and a co-conspirator of Mr. Nichols relaying what Mr. Nichols told to him, the whether or not Mr. Nichols said it or not, it's statements that Onfunk is asserting Mr. Nichols gave to him, even though it's, and it's a statement against the penal interest of Mr. Nichols, the reliability of the statement, the, the statement itself being, the hearsay issue we believe is, is dealt with in that it would be Mr. Nichols, a co-conspirator of Onfunk, relaying something in confidence to Umfunk or saying something in confidence to somebody else who he considers a person reliable enough to share something that inculpatory with. Umfunk is not trying to harm Mr. Nichols. So he's not going out lying on Mr. Nichols. He's sharing this information in an effort to help Mr. Nichols get him to shut up and stop talking. They all are trying to get him to stop talking. So in terms of the reliability of the information, nobody here has any reason to share inaccurate information. It only furthers their purposes to be truthful about what's happening so that they can further protect themselves and inoculate themselves from any harm coming from this man talking. So the harms and dangers of hearsay that are normally present when, you know, I mean, the whole reason it's kept out is, you know, we don't know if it's true or not, mm -hmm. are handled and dealt with by the circumstantial, I hate to use this, guarantees of trustworthiness given that are present in the way that this statement comes about. It's told in a way, it's relayed in a way that indicates is shared in order to to help not to harm um, Mr. Nichols, to help all of them and keep them safe. So it's layered co-conspirator hearsay, if you will, but that first um, relaying of information, the declarant, Mr. Nichols, saying it to Onfunk, it would be definitely a statement against penal interest. But Mr. Greer, who is Umfunk, sharing that information is a co-conspirator statement, which we believe gets us past this idea that this is here, nested hearsay, nested hearsay. And as far as the 403 argument that is being made, the, in order for it to be so unduly prejudicial as to permit its exclusion, it would have to lure the fact finder into declaring guilt on a ground different from proof specific to the offense charge. And that just doesn't exist here. So we don't believe that they have met that and by they, I mean the opponents of disinformation coming in. They don't, they have not met their burden of showing that this statement from Onfunk regarding Nichols telling on himself and and basically Nichols trying to get help for himself like he needs brother needs to pay for a lawyer we did it for him we don't believe hey no no sir Mr. Harvey stop right now stop right now stop right now Mr. Harvey Mr. Harvey, sit down. I am not going to have you interrupt court. You may object in just a moment. We will get to your objection in a moment. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. There has been no showing that 
this information is so substantially more prejudicial than probative that it should permit the exclusion of what we believe is obviously relevant evidence. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harvey, your objection. My objection is the line of the court. Making things up for the court and saying speculatively to the court that I assume like you were hating for Mr. Nichols. You got any evidence of that? I don't even understand that to be what she said. Okay, well, the record will reflect what she said, but I understood her to be talking about what was being said within the context of this conversation we just listened to. Your Honor, just... Yes, sir. Go ahead, Ms. Sharp. Did I miss any reference to it? So, well, well is the person to whom this allegedly... I'm going to listen to it again. Offline, not in court. Your Honor, this is where I'm at with this. Just because the state says something is so doesn't make it so. I understand. And the state is saying, oh, well, this was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. This was done in furtherance of the conspiracy. The whole point of the hearsay rules, and I understand that the confrontation clause might not be implicated here, but the hearsay rules, the whole point of the hearsay rules is you get to see who's saying it, know what their basis is. You get to cross-examine them. They come to court, et cetera. And the problem here is the state is just sitting here saying, oh, well, clearly Mr. Umfunk did this to further the conspiracy. How do we know? How does she know? Maybe Umfunk... I'm not saying this is the case, but what if Umfunk was involved? Umfunk would have every reason to shift responsibility to other people. What about the next line in the hearsay ladder that we have? We don't know what people's motivations are. And just because the state says, well, their motivation was to do this or do that, she's not inside Umfunk's head. She's not inside Rel's head. So I reject that their argument that they can just label things as hearsay exceptions and it makes it so. Well, I understand that. I take what everybody says as your argument in support of your position. I don't accept it as fact. It's an argument. I hear the counterargument. Sometimes I hear a lot more counterarguments back and forth after that. And then I make a determination about whether our evidence rules permit this particular evidence. The point of the hearsay rules and all of the evidence rules is so that to the extent the court can help it, only trustworthy information gets before the jury. And that's what we're trying to sort out here. So I understand that the stakes are high. I think that this might be a good time to break for the day. I will re-listen to this. Mr. Adkins, if you can find either the date that I can find the motion or the case law itself, just send that to Ms. Persfield. She'll send it on to me. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And I will try to get the court and send to Mr. Adkins what I read to the court as the transcript of that. That would be great. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. I know that y'all are all going to hate to hear this, but sometime during the day tomorrow, and I don't know when, and I don't know how long it's going to be, people are going to come in to work on what hopefully will be a fix to the sound issues we seem to have a lot of last week. And there are a couple of other things going on that the court needs to deal with as well, not with regard to this case. Just in terms of scheduling tomorrow, it's going to be quite a challenge to figure out when we might actually be able to get here and use the courtroom for any, you know, amount of time that will be worthwhile. And so we are not going to have a court day tomorrow. I 
you know, y'all may have other cases to deal with, but to the extent you don't, please, you know, continue to work on this case. We still have a lot of non-jury work to do. I think we did a good job this week of getting to the things that will be coming up in the next several weeks. Um, so thank y'all, everybody, for working hard on that. And we're going to have to circle back on, uh, you know, the stuff that is still facing us in this wiretap and some other things. Uh, I understand the state is going to get witness 61 through the end uh, and the information about the exhibits generally coming in with those witnesses to the defense by Monday. And I will see everybody Monday at 8.45. We'll have the jury back with us then. Okay? Anything anybody needs to put on the record before we adjourn for the day? Just a question, Your Honor. We were internally, um, we wrote down the dates that the court said that we had admin days. But as I was speaking with one of the counselors uh -huh. for defendants, um, she and I, only she and I, and my team did not have the same recollection, was okay. that there was another period of time that the court had mentioned that we would have the ability to further make these arguments. Was this the only week? This is the only week so far that we, that I, I know of, that I have established, I mean, I didn't establish this week, but I have not established other dates that we're going to be in court without a jury. Okay. We are going to have to determine what those are because we clearly need some more of them. But the dates that I've given to y'all and to the jury so far are dates that the jury will be out and we also will be out. So I'll just have to, I, I know one of the things I need to do is figure out some more in court for us, but non-jury dates. And I anticipate, um, some of them will be maybe the third or fourth week of September. At some point, I'm going to try to make them either beginning of the week or end of the week, but I, I don't know yet. So I'll, I'll have to get back to everybody on that. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right, just for the record on that last argument that yes. you're considering, um, it's OCGA 24-8-805. That is uh, what we are traveling under. Twenty. It's OCGA, Official Code of Georgia Annotated, 24-8-805. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I doubt if many people know that. They just know hearsay within hearsay. But thank you. All right, we, if there's nothing else, then we are adjourned.